May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be always pleasing in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. <coughs> Sorry, Andrew. Uh, I want to focus on the gospel today, and I particularly want to focus uh, on that phrase, whoever does not carry their cross and follow me cannot be my disciple. But I want to clarify something first that comes just prior to that. So Jesus is talking to a large crowd of people, and they are sort of on the fringes. They're kind of his followers, but not really. They're fans, but not disciples. And he's talking to them, and he says, If anyone comes to me and does not hate father and mother, isn't that a good sentence on Father's Day? Um, <laughs> wife and children, brothers and sisters, yes, even their own life. Such a person cannot be my disciple. There's a problem with that. Uh, and the problem is that it's, Jesus spoke Aramaic, which is kind of like Hebrew. It was written down by Luke in Greek, and then it's been translated into English. And Aramaic doesn't really have a word for that kind of despise or hate, like we do in English. That might say something about us, that we have language for hate and despise. But for them, it's more like uh, prefer or prioritize. So um, what Jesus is saying to the crowd is, if you are not willing to prioritize being my disciple over your parents and your siblings and uh, those sorts of things, even over your own life, well, then you're not quite ready for it. And that's a slightly different thing, isn't it? It's not that we have to hate those. We just have to understand a set of priorities. And that means we've taken the sting out of that first clause. It's about priorities, it's not about hating our family. However, the sting comes back in the next sentence in a major way. Whoever does not carry their cross and follow me cannot be my disciple. And in church we have crosses. So they're, a, they're a major part of what it means to be a Christian. I've got one on my stall, and two, uh, <coughs> they're on the altar frontal, the, and the big wooden cross. And the problem is that we don't see them uh, the way people in Palestine 2,000 years ago would have seen them. We see them cleaned up. They look nice. They look, sometimes they'll even look pretty. Decorated, shiny. It's a very different thing if, if you're walking, say, into Jerusalem and um, just there is a slave who's been crucified or, uh, or somebody who was part of a rebellion against the Romans. Those are the two reasons uh, they crucified people, slaves or rebels. You get a very different picture of what a cross means at that moment because what you're seeing is the willingness to commit to something. You really have to be committed to your rebellion if you know that the consequences could well be painful public crucifixion. And it was all those things quite deliberately. So Jesus is, is putting the sting back into what it means to be his follower. And I've heard a lot of people use that phrase over the years, not so much now, uh, but in years gone by, if you will, you know, that's my cross to bear. Have you heard that phrase? People use that phrase? Um, and I want to clarify some things that it's not. I've heard it used uh, sometimes in relationships. You're married to someone, perhaps, uh, and your spouse is an abusive alcoholic. And somebody says, oh, that's your cross to bear because that way you should put up with their bad choices. No. Um, somebody else's bad choices are not your cross to bear. They're not. That doesn't mean God's not in that situation. It's not that there's a ministry perhaps there, that there might be hope for transformation. All those things are true. But it's not your cross to bear. Please don't spiritualize somebody else's bad choices. Or occasionally people have said it about things that are, have gone wrong with you know, their bodies. You know, cancer or those sorts of things. That's my cross to bear. No. It's, it's, a, it's a gene form that's 
mutated and isn't working properly. And don't spiritualize these things that aren't. They are horrible and God is with us in those things. <clears throat> but they're not about what it means to be a disciple of Christ. To be a disciple of Christ, to carry your cross, means something has to be ready to die. What is it? Now, my answer to that question might reflect more about my own character. This might be a kind of a large group therapy thing. Maybe your answer is different to mine. I believe the answer is the thing that has to be ready to die is the I. The ego, that it's about me that goes on in so much of our lives. You know, we the, the tendency to look at things and think, how's that going to affect me? What is that? What you know? We don't care about things that happen in other countries as much if they don't affect us. Because it's about me. We worry about things and how they impact on us. Mark Zuckerberg, who is the founder of Facebook, says it's a reality of life that a cat in your street is more interesting to you than a, than a disaster in a country you've never been to. Because of proximity and closeness and how it affects us personally. That part of what it means to be a human being needs to die if we are going to be truly disciples of Christ. True disciples of Christ. Now we could be like that crowd on the edge and think Jesus is a really great fella. He's got some interesting things to say. He's nice. He goes around and heals people, which is a good thing. And I think that's a good thing. I like the values in Christianity. Heard that said a few times. That's not what it means to be a disciple of Christ. <coughs> to commit ourselves to the extent where we are able to put the eye on the cross so that we see as God sees and we are willing to do what must be done to respond to the needs of the world so that we can be a part of God's mission to the world. And that tragically does sometimes mean that people die. And, and I hope and pray that it never comes to that for me or for any of us. But we remember in the church, the martyrs, because they are people who did make that choice because they were disciples of Christ. They had the courage to carry their cross to the final stage of their faith. So I pray it never happens to us, but I pray we might carry our cross. But if it ever came to, we would be with it. Because the bad news is it's hard. The good news is it's good value. It's worth it. And the very good news is that when we drop our cross, Christ calls us to give it another go, pick it up, try again, and next time you drop it, because you will, Give it another go, pick it up, carry your cross, follow Christ. Be a disciple of Christ in the world, that we may be part of God's mission of love to the world. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen.